I want to start with something that seems to be happening at an increased rate. And that is supporters who think they can disrespect me because they super chat or because they're patrons. Now, I had an incident this weekend where someone who claims to have followed me for a little while, I guess, or actually claimed to have followed me for a while, he got an email from a member of my staff telling him to stop wasting my time. Okay? I wasn't made of the I wasn't made aware of this email until after he sent the email. Okay? That one's on me. A staffer on a staffer a staffer got out of pocket on my watch, so that responsibility falls on my shoulders. The buck stops here. There's no getting around that. Now, all of that said, even though I would not have used the language that my staffer used, I stand behind what that message was. No, I don't mean stop wasting my time. Okay, I only use that kind of language with trolls and haters. But what I did agree with was that this particular dude was dishonest about a lot of things in terms of our communications back and forth over the last few months. And I'm not going to get into the details of what happened or what didn't. But the Reader's Digest version is that this guy wanted free advice, which, by the way, I am perfectly okay with. That's why I allow you guys to call in. I have absolutely zero issues with you guys calling me on my show and seeking advice on certain things. That's why I started this whole thing, the whole TSR Live in the first place. But what this guy did, what this guy attempted to do, was get individualized advice without becoming a patron or booking a consultation. Again, all he has to do is call in during the show. I open the phone lines for two hours a day, guys. The call is free. The advice is free. I charge $225 an hour for my consultations, guys. And to be quite honest with you, um, it's there's probably going to be another rate hike before the end of the year. I get a, I have a lot of consultations, okay? But let's go back to the $225. I don't care how much money you make. $225, that's a lot of fucking money, guys. Most guys either can't or won't pay for that, which, again, is totally fine with me. But I do realize that there are guys out here who need my advice but can't afford it. So I came up with a few ways to get to 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 make indivi- to, to 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 make individualized advice available to people without them having to pay an arm and a leg, right? I want what you I want what you have. I need this advice. I don't have the money. I get that. So what I did is I created a $15 patron tier, Patreon tier that gives you two video responses per month. Okay? I also give substantial discounts for patrons up to 45% off of my, of my regular rate. But even if, even if someone can't or won't pay $5 a month, this is why I opened the phone line, guys. Guys, listen, I love giving out free advice. But my time is very, my time is valuable to me. The older I get, the more valuable the commodity of time becomes. The bigger this thing gets, the more responsibilities I have, the more clients I get the less free time I have to myself. Not only that, it takes a lot of work to do this show every day. Don't cry for me. I'm doing what I love to do. But because I don't have a lot of time, I charge $225 per hour for any advice I give outside of the hours of 1 and 3 Eastern, Monday through Thursday. I'm on a little early today. I'm going to be on early all this week, and I'll tell you guys why momentarily. But not only was this guy never a patron, He lied to me and said that he was when I asked him if he was. There are eight months of emails between us, and the interactions go go a little something like this on the regular. He emails me. He blows smoke up my ass. He tells me, oh, I love your show, and you're the man and all this. He asks me a very long and drawn-out question, okay? Then I tell him I can help book a consultation or become a patron to get a discount or call into the show. Then he'll reply with some bullshit reason as to why he couldn't or wouldn't book a consult. Oh, I'm having trouble with Patreon. There's a glitch in the system. Oh, I've got to work this week. It was always something. I invited him, guys, no less than th- no less than on three different occasions. Okay? 
I invited him on three different occasions to go through the proper channels to get a one-on-one -on -one with me. This is what I did. But he never did, guys. Okay? And when my staffer, when my staffer Andy, a lot of you, uh, listen, a lot of you guys have, have had interactions with Andy, okay? Andy discovered that this dude didn't respect my time and didn't respect the time of my supporters. So what Andrew did is he wrote an email. Now, granted, again, Andy should have run this by me first, but he didn't, and that's been dealt with, right? That's I've already dealt with him on that. But instead of coming to me directly, this guy did, after getting this email from Andrew and asking me, hey, Donovan, you know, listen, man, your staffer sent this to me, and I, you know, I wanted to address this with you directly to let you know that this was not my intention to clear the record. Instead of doing all that, guys, he sent me this. He says, quote, well, I just want to let you know. And by the way, the guy's name is B. Scott. And I don't look at the chat anymore. I only look at Super Chat. If B. Scott's in the, ch in the chat, ban the fuck out of him. Get him out of here. Eliminate him from the channel. Time him out, ban him. Don't want, I, I don't want you guys to see him or hear him. Don't give a shit. He says, well, I just want to let you know that I've been a longtime subscriber to your YouTube channel and a Patreon supporter, but I will not tolerate the unnecessary disrespect from you or your staff from now on. I'm unsubscribing from your channel and no longer supporting anything you do or associate with. P.S. Learn to, learn to respect your supporters, megalomaniac. Now, here's the thing. Had he reached out to me at first and he didn't like the interaction, right? If I told him, ah, go fuck yourself, then he's got every right to write that email, right? Again, listen, my, whether or not my staffer disrespected him, or, uh, disrespected him or not, at this point, I don't give a shit. I would be concerned, except for the fact that he took this tact, right? Gentlemen, what this email told me was that he never intended to go through the proper channels to get a one-on-one -on -one with me in the first place. And two, he's the typical nigga who expects free shit from me because I'm black, which means what? Which means he does not respect my time. So he's up my ass for eight months asking me this and that. But the minute he gets called out for trying some grimy shit, now I'm a megalomaniac. Now I have delusions of grandeur. Think about it, guys. If this guy really wanted to squash this, he would have come directly to me for clarification instead of telling me what his punk ass did or didn't tolerate. This guy, B. Scott, he's a part of a subset of the black community who admires guys like me, but he secretly hates me because I do things like fuck white girls, because I speak well, I'm kicking life's ass, I'm unapologetic. I, dude, the other day, I had someone on Facebook call me a wise sellout. A what? Like, he acknowledged that I know my shit, but he called me a sellout. The guy literally admitted that he envies me, but doesn't want to put in the work, so I'm the sellout. This is the problem with niggas, guys. Niggas want something for nothing from black people because we're black, but when we don't give it to them, they call us sellouts. They call us coons. They call us megalomaniacs. Another former patron of mine talked shit about Devin. Talk, talk, talk shit about Devin. And when I checked him on it, this nigga had the gall to tell me I was white knighting. Guys, I get this shit all the time. And it's always niggas. It's a goddamn shame that I got the most, most of the hate. The overwhelming majority I get. The overwhelming majority of the hate I get is from black people. Niggas and black women. We talk about uplifting each other. But the minute someone comes along with something to say, fuck you, you're a sellout. The minute I don't give away free shit, fuck you, you're a megalomaniac. Not black men who want to better themselves. Like you guys, okay? I'm talking about niggas. Dudes who only want to be entertained by the fuckery and the fighting and the infighting on black YouTube and in the black community, but then they want to come over here and shit on me because I'm out here doing what I do and not giving them free shit. When guys say, learn to respect your supporters, what they mean is, please allow me to talk shit about you 
and don't respond because I pay for your content. Gentlemen, I blocked no less than two dozen patrons and refunded their money because of shit like this. Every single one of them, niggas, not black men, not black men looking to improve themselves. I'm talking about ignorant ass niggas. And you guys know who you are. Guys, I love doing what I do, man. I And, and from the heart, I absolutely love each and every one, from the bottom of my heart, guys, I love each and every one of you guys. You guys are the reason that I am able to do this for a living. And, and for that, I will be forever grateful, regardless of how long I'm able to do this. But when you disrespect my time by expecting me to just give you something you didn't earn, when you are cutting corners, when you are deceiving, when you are deceiving me, this guy, as a matter of fact, B. Scott, first his name was Brian, then his name was Bruce. Why did he do that? Because he didn't want me to catch on that it was the same guy, Brian or Bruce. I don't have time to look at emails, man. I don't have time to look at email addresses. I get dozens of these things every day. No, this guy took full advantage of this and changed his name. He did that shit on purpose. But when you disrespect my time, when you're trying to cut corners to get something from me that others are willing to pay for, I got no time or respect for you. Again, guys, I know that not everybody can afford $225 an hour, man. I know that not everybody can afford 15 bucks a month or even $5 a month. I get it. I've been there. But that's the reason I decided to make my entire show available to the public and stop abandoning guys who can't afford a Patreon membership and give you guys access to, access to call me during my show for free. So B. Scott, fuck off, nigga unsubscribe from my channel and tell everyone you know to unsubscribe. I do not want, I do not need people like you anywhere around or anywhere near what we are trying to do here. And anyone who has a problem with what I just said and did, fuck you too. Unsubscribe from me too. I don't want you guys around me. I don't want, I don't want that kind of fuckery around me. I'm not pro-black, I'm not pro-this, no, I'm pro-male. I'm going to treat you like a man, irregardless of your skin tone. Just because you're black doesn't mean I'm cutting you a break. I'm going to treat you like a man until you give me reason to treat you otherwise. Those of you who understand how hard I work to make this show possible and to make steady improvements in your experience, you guys know why I do what I do. I want you guys to stick around, not niggas like B. Scott. B. Scott, fuck off, nigga.